Okay. Now that we've talked about addition and elimination, let's talk about elimination addition. Okay, so first of all, we said that the key thing that, that uh, points out addition elimination is your leaving group will always be ortho or para to a strong electron withdrawing group like NO2 or CF3. Um, and then the nucleophilologist ends up replacing that leaving group, keeping in mind you have this as an intermediate, where you have a carbon where the nucleophile and the leaving group are shared until this can resonate back down and kick it out. And we said that you can never add to the meta position because we need this resonance to occur. Elimination addition reactions have their own set of rules that differentiate them from addition elimination reactions. First of all, elimination, remember that is the formation of double bonds and triple bonds. And typically, the first step of any elimination addition reaction is in fact the formation of a triple bond within the benzene ring. And yeah, that sounds weird. This is what we call a benzyme. A benzene with a triple bond in it. So the first major distinction between addition elimination and elimination addition is the elimination addition reactions that we're talking about now do not need that withdrawing group on the ring. All you need is the leaving group. Secondly, what's over the arrow rather than a nucleophile is typically a very, very strong base, NH2 minus. And sometimes they'll couple it up with Na positive, but you see NH2 with, or you see Na NH2 and you know you've got a super strong base. And then usually we also have some NH3 floating around. Okay, so starting off, what happens? The first step is to form your benzyme. So we have a hydrogen over here, and because NH2 is such a strong base, it's able to make this really, really unstable looking thing. Because we know benzene is stable, it's aromatic, it's got everything going for it. But benzene, not so stable. We've learned the geometry of triple bonds, right? They're supposed to be linear. If you want to make something straight inside of a ring, there's going to be a ton of angular strength, which means this benzene we're forming is super reactive. Now, we end up getting this, and now how is that benzyme going to react? Well, we've got this NH3 over the arrow. And NH3 comes along with a pair of lone pairs, and those lone pairs are going to react with that benzyme. Now, where that NH3 goes is going to be either carbon of the benzyme. In this example, both of these carbons are exactly the same. So you can't really choose one over the other. So this, let's say I star carbon one. So we say carbon one is different from carbon two because I labeled it somehow. That nitrogen can then come in and attack carbon one, or in a different example, it could come in and attack carbon two. So let's draw out both of those, and what happens? Let's start with just one. If I attack carbon one, well, this carbon currently has four bonds, right? Three from the triple bond and one from the single bond. Something has to make room for it. We'll come back to attacking two in a little bit. So what ends up happening is the electrons from the triple bond go over to carbon two. And now we are left with these double bonds are unchanged. The NH3 has attached, and remember when nitrogen has three bonds, it's positive, and then carbon two ended up becoming negative. The electrons from the triple bond move to carbon two, so we have a double bond and a negative carbon. And yes, we know that negative carbons are never particularly stable, or I mean, especially when they're on double bonds, but what do you think will happen real quick? This negative charge will grab the proton and neutralize the structure. So you'll end up getting negative goes, grabs that proton, swings over here, and now we have the nitrogen added to the benzene. And now this mechanism is exactly the same if we attack carbon two. Carbon two gets attacked, the negative charge gets switched over to carbon one. So we have the product we made in this example where carbon one was attacked, so we have NH2 here. And here's carbon one all starred up for us. And then the other product you would make is 
where carbon two has the nitrogen attached to it, NH2. So that's an NH2. Okay, that's the general dish, uh, general gist of the simplest version of elimination addition. Okay, if there's no strong directing group, you're going to add to either side of the benzyme. Okay, but then what if there is a strong directing group? Well, let's start by defining what that even means. There are two situations where you'll be dealing with directing groups in elimination addition reactions. Let's start off with a simple version. Uh, let's put an electron donating group, like N. Let's put an OH on this ring. Or let's make it OCH3 so we don't have to worry about the impregnation. An OCH3 on a benzene ring. Okay. So start off by asking, how is this oxygen resonating with benzene ring? Think about what we were doing with NO2 in the uh, additional elimination reactions. This oxygen has a set of lone pairs that can resonate down like this into the ring and put those electrons wherever they please, but those electrons will always end up in either the ortho or the para position, right? If I do just one set of arrows, this would swing down over there, and I get a negative charge in the ortho position. Or I could resonate down a bit further, and then these electrons get kicked over there. So the OCH3 being a, you know, an electron donating group will always resonate such that you get negative charges on the ortho or para positions. So now let's go through our mechanism. Let's put a Cl over here on the meta position. Okay, and so you have your um, your NaNH2 and your NH3 again, and you're asked what the major product is. Well, the first step is still the same. You're going to deprotonate and form your benzyme. So that NaNH2, or rather that NH2 minus, will come in, grab that proton, electron swing down, and kick your leaving group out. And now you have A benzyme here. Okay. Now, in the previous example, we had no directing groups, which means that N3 that came in in the next step had two places it could choose to go. In this example, we do not have that leisure. We said before that this oxygen is resonating into the ring, and it puts a negative charge on the ortho and the para position. So we know before that NaNH3 ever came in, we have a resonance structure that looks like this, negative charge in the para position. So if this NH3 is going to be attacking the benzene ring with a lone pair, where do you think it's going to want to attack? The carbon that through resonance becomes negative, or the carbon that through resonance does not become negative? Definitely the one that doesn't become negative because we don't want to converge two sets of electrons on each other. So this N3 or this NH3 has only one position it can possibly attack. The para, uh, not the para, the meta position. Because that does not have the negative charge. And then these electrons of the triple bond get pushed down over there. And yes, you might think, well, now we're getting a negative charge there anyway, isn't that still bad? Technically, yes, but it, but Keep in mind, through resonance, that lone pair would have been repelling the NH3. This is the only spot where the NH3 is able to attack without getting kicked right away, uh, kicked away by the ring. And so your major product, well, we're not quite there yet. We have an OCH3. We have the benzene ring. We have the NH3 positive that we added there. NH2, H positive. And we have a double bond with a negative charge. Well, just like before, that negative charge will go out and grab a proton, and we'll get a neutral ring. And so the final product of this, there's only one, because OCH3 is a stronger directing group, which means it will always direct that, direct that NH3 to the meta position. And so this would be your only major product. Now, what if I changed this slightly and just said it was not OCH3, but CH3? 
Carbenes, we know, are electron donating groups, but they are very weak electron donating groups. And it turns out that carbon isn't strong enough to have this effect. It doesn't directly resonate into the ring, which means there's no formal negative charge ever put directly on a carbon of benzene. And for that reason, if it was CH3 that you were directing with, you would get two products just like the example we were looking at before. So in that case, you would have had CH3 with the NH2 added in the meta position, and then the other product being where you had CH3 and the NH2 added in the para position. Okay? CH3 is not strong enough to choose one position over another. Now, let's do one more example, but instead of using a donating group, we'll use NO2, a withdrawing group. So we still have that benzene ring. We have some leaving group over here. And we have N double bond O, O minus, our good withdrawing group. Of course, benzene. And then over the arrow, we have Na, NH2 with NH3. Okay, first question is, how do we know this isn't additional elimination instead of elimination addition? Well, we have a good leaving group and we have a strong withdrawing group, so that might say, okay, we're doing additional elimination. But they are not in ortho para, they're neither ortho nor para to each other, they're meta. So that's one reason why it's not what we discussed in the first part of the video. Second of all, what's over the arrow? NaNH2, NH3. This is always going to be used for the elimination addition, the reactions that make the benzyme. Okay, so we have to consider it from that position. And if we think back to what we were talking about before, we said that NO2 puts positive charges through resonance onto the ortho and positive and para positions. So we know where that NH2 is going to want to or that NH3 is going to want to attack with its lone pairs, either the ortho positions or the para position, depending on where the benzyme forms. So Let's go through the mechanism like before. That NH2 will deprotonate, and so it's gonna grab this hydrogen over here to form the triple bond. Electrons swing down, take the chlorine out, and you have your, rear, your, uh, your triple bond in the ring. So we have this. We have our NO2. And like we said before, NO2 puts a positive charge on the para position, which means there's only one good spot for that NH3 to come in and attack now, the para position, because it, would be, it becomes positive through resonance. It becomes positive through resonance. So that nitrogen will attack here, the electrons swing over to the carbon there, and from that point it's basically the same thing we've been doing over and over again. NO2 was untouched, although technically there's resonance involved. You don't have to worry about that, you've seen it already. And now you have the NH3 added to the para position, and you have a negative charge and a double bond, and then you just end up getting, let's draw these hydrogens out, H, H2, that nitrogen is positive, do a proton transfer to neutralize yourself, negative charge the hydrogen, neutralizes the nitrogen, and so your final product is only one, because we had a strong withdrawing group in this example, a directing group, so, you can't get two products. There's only one good spot for that NH3 to attack. And that will give you an NH2 added to the para position relative to the NO2. That is your final product. So what can I say from this? When it comes to elimination addition problems, your rules about how donating and withdrawing groups direct is kind of the opposite of what we taught for the first exam. Specifically, specifically for elimination addition reactions, EWGs, electron withdrawing groups, direct ortho para because they put positive charges in that position when the benzene is attacked. Electron donating groups, on the other hand, put negative charges on the ortho para position, which repels the nucleophile from coming in there, so EDGs direct meta. Both of these are opposite what you learned for the first exam and are only specific to this benzene creating reaction. And that's the gist of these elimination addition reactions.